Hello, today we're going to go through the Coxbox GPS, just basic overall functionality of the buttons and what to do when you first get your GPS out of the box. Now I'll show you that it is compatible with all legacy equipment. We have our standard harness, which is compatible with your current equipment, and your standard Coxbox 08 headset. This is going to be a smart harness that will come down the line and we'll explain that at that time. It's not used currently. So the first thing you're going to want to do is turn on the unit. And this may be the trickiest part of it all. You look for the red button, hold the button, and turn it on. What you'll see now is a familiar speed coach GPS type screen. And you'll have your time and date at the top, your volume, other icons, which we'll see when you're connected to other things, and then your satellite icon. The satellite icon needs to be full to have a good GPS coverage, so if it's hollow like it is now, you want to wait until it becomes full before you start your row. Now you'll notice we have several new buttons. Right here is going to be your home screen mode. So whatever screen you're on, you want to get back to the four quadrant screen, hit this button. This is called athlete performance mode, which we won't go into now. This is called seat display mode, which is going to be added at a later date. And then this is going to be your power on, power off, and your menu mode button. You have four navigational buttons at the bottom, which we'll show later. And your start, pause, reset button. And then over here, we have your volume control button. Now when you're first getting started, you want to make sure you have all your screens aligned the way you want. So if you hit your right or left arrow, you can go into the different flex fields and change them using the up and down button to whichever measurement you'd like in that display. Go through and change all of them to the ones you want before you're ready to row. And then once you're done, just let go. It'll time out after a few seconds and you're good to go. Turn your volume up, turn your volume down. Make sure you're at the right level. This volume knob is always on, so even if you're on a menu screen and you need to quickly turn up the volume, hit the buttons and it will always be functional. Another button that is always functional is going to be your start, pause, reset button. Now before you're about to row, you want to hit this button once. Make sure you're in ready mode. The Cox box will then wait for the first stroke to be detected by the boat. Once that first stroke is detected, which I'll simulate here, you'll see the timer start, and now you know that the Cox box is recording the data for that session. When you are done, you would hit the button to stop it, or hold it to reset it, and you'll see your session is saved. Next, we'll go through the different menu modes. So you hit the menu button, and now we want to note that up and down will go through the various list of settings where the right button will take you into a menu item and the left button will take you out of the menu item. So right to go in, if we wanted to live stream our data, we would pair this to a phone and turn live streaming on and it would be, be broadcast to the cloud for anyone to view. If we go down to workouts, we go in, we could create a interval workout there's several preset ones, but if we just want to change one, that's easy to do. Go in, change intervals. We want variable intervals. We want eight of them. And then we want to set one to distance, one to time, put in the rest. And once you're done, exit out and you do the run workout. Data recall is where we can review all our stored sessions. There aren't many good sessions on here, but you get an overview of the summary. You could dive in and then go in and this is where you would see your 100 meter splits. Data link is going to be how you upload the data to link logbook. If you put this into discoverable, go into your Android or iOS link logbook app and upload the data and then you can review it and export it as you please. We have the setup menu. We can set up our speed and distance as either speed or split. So if we want speed instead of split, we should make it speed, and then you could change the units from meters, meters per second, kilometers per hour, miles, miles per hour. Auto pause. This is basically if the unit doesn't detect a stroke for six seconds, it thinks you're taking a break, it'll stop the timer. 
it'll wait for the next stroke and start the timer automatically without you doing anything. If you do not want this on, you can always turn it off. And auto shutdown, by default is 10 minutes, 10 minutes no activity, it will shut down the Cox box. If you do not want that to happen, you can turn it off and then you always have to manually shut it down. Advanced, we will go into quickly, but these are more advanced settings. The one I will point to is time and date. You don't have to set the time and date, like I said, but you do have to set your time zone or daylight savings time is active or not at the moment. Back to the main menu and we'll go down. We have an odometer where we can track today, week, month, year, overall. And then the about screen, which will show you your latest firmware version and help with some diagnostics, understanding if you have the latest version and maybe how to update. Now, if we wanna get back to the main screen, we hit the 500 meter button. We're back on the main screen. If we wanna turn it off, hold down the power button until it says turn off and we're done. For more questions, email tech support at nkhome.com and we will be pleased to assist you.